A war today involves a lot of technology. And if you have technological dominance, you will win the war. For 70 years now, a network of scientists has been collaborating and sharing research and scientific results, all for one common goal, to deter and defend NATO against any adversaries. That alliance of academic and military minds is known today as the NATO Science and Technology Organization, or STO. The history of the STO came out of a U.S. Air Force general after the Second World War saying that he would never ever again fight a war against an adversary where the number of planes was the decisive factor. He wanted to have equipment and technology that was superior to his adversaries. And he asked a then chief scientist in the U.S. Air Force, von Karman, to solve this problem. In 1949, Hungarian-born Dr. Theodore von Karman, the former chair of the U.S. Air Force Scientific Advisory Board, began looking into ways of stimulating scientific cooperation among NATO nations for their common benefit. It was the partnership between von Karman and U.S. Air Force General Henry H. Arnold that paved the way for the creation of the NATO Science and Technology Organization. Back in the mid-20th century, the organization had quite a different name. At the end of the war, Europe was, was devastated. Everything was ruined. So there was a Marshall Plan to improve uh, the livelihood of, of the indigenous people in Europe. The intellectual environment had to be improved as well. So uh, because of this connection between General Arnold and uh, Theodor von Karman, the uh, Various organizations were being created for that purpose. And one of them was, of course, von Karman's idea to have a group of advisors to rebuild the aeronautics world. Dr. Theodore von Karman traveled to Europe, conducting studies on the state of aeronautical science across NATO's member nations. Invitations were sent out to aeronautical authorities of NATO nations to convene in Washington. That's when the group first formed an agreement to cooperate and share research for the common good of the NATO community. The Advisory Group for Aeronautical, later to become Aerospace, Research and Development became known as AGARD. In 1952, AGARD was recommended for integration into NATO. Once NATO was formed as a defensive alliance in Europe, the defense in NATO at that time, of course, centered on countering any kind of attack from the Soviet Union. The early focus of NATO from the United States point of view was aerospace, making missiles fly, making airplanes fly, and uh, understanding the whole business of defending against these uh, rockets and any kind of projection of power to the United States. AGARD's headquarters were established at Palais de Chaillot in Paris, where NATO was based at the time. Various panels were created in medicine, flight mechanics, fluid dynamics, propulsion and energetics. In 1954, it was formally agreed that AGARD should be fully integrated into NATO. 1955 to 1957 saw panels created in structures and materials and avionics. In recognition of his leadership in science, engineering and aeronautics, in 1963, Dr. Theodore von Karman was presented the National Medal of Science by U.S. President John F. Kennedy. Dr. von Karman, great pleasure for me to select you as the first recipient of the National Medal of Science. Your assistance to the United States Air Force and to the NATO Advisory Group for Aeronautical Research and Development have been outstanding. I am very, very much honored by this greatest distinction but a scientist can get. Agard attracted scientists from all over. There were some high profile ones too. When I came to Agard, Niels Armstrong, the guy from the moon, he was on our board. He was the, the NASA representative on the Agard board. That was impressive. And there were other people. They came because they were convinced this was the best way to cooperate because they offered something and they received. 
1965 to 1967 saw the addition of the Technical Information Panel and the Guidance Control Panel. Also in 1967, von Karman set up a new organization. Von Karman started AGARD first, and then after several years, uh, he said, well, now we have to complete the whole team. And so uh, he then uh, helped to create a new group that was doing other than aerospace, the Defense Research Group. In 1967, to coincide with NATO HQ and SHAPE moving to Belgium, Agard moved its headquarters to neuilly sur seine on the outskirts of Paris. This was shortly followed by the addition of a new electromagnetic wave propagation panel in 1970 and the establishment of the Aerospace Application Studies Committee in 1971. For the next 30 years, Agard and the DRG coexisted. However, after the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, the strategic priorities of NATO changed. As the Cold War came to an end, there was a need to reassess the organizational map of the Alliance to identify areas that could benefit from restructuring. It was logical and beneficial that these two bodies united to form the Research and Technology Organization in 1997. The Defense Research Group uh, involved all important disciplines in defense apart from aerodynamics. With radar, for instance, you had the ACART group dealing with aeronautical radars and you had the G DRG dealing with naval radars or land-based radars. Now, it's ridiculous to separate those things from each other. We could gain a lot of efficiency by combining the Defense Research Group and ACART activities. You had to work out how you could do that without losing any activity in the previous organization or losing people in the network. We were somewhat worried that with the uh, disappearance of the Soviet Union that uh, the um, larger nations would lose interest in uh, our activity because of the reduced perception of strategic threat, strategic urgency. Luckily, we were wrong. In April 1997, the new RTO organized an AGARD conference on future aerospace technology at Palais Zone near Paris. At the closing ceremony of the conference, the absorption of AGARD into the new organization was fully announced, thereby ending 45 years of activities dedicated to aerospace research under AGARD. In 1997, the research panels, a feature shared by both of the earlier organizations, were assessed and consolidated into the six panels that are still in operation today, holding their Xerof meetings, which began the work of the RTO. These panels were augmented in 1999 by the NATO Modeling and Simulation Group. In 2012, the current structure of the NATO Science and Technology Organization was established. This included the Center for Maritime Research and Experimentation in La Spezia, the Collaboration Support Office managing the collaborative program in Paris, and the new office of the NATO Chief Scientist at NATO HQ in Brussels. There's no doubt that the Science and Technology Organization that we have today has benefited from the rich legacy of the previous organizations. The reorganization that I am most familiar with in 2012, creating the Office of the Chief Scientist and also bringing in a new organization, the Center for Maritime Research and Experimentation, has greatly enriched the research that um, the STO is now doing. The biggest achievement to me is that after 70 years of existence, the organization is still there and still relevant and is still chosen by many nations as the place to be for collaborative research. I think that's the biggest achievement. The NATO Science and Technology Organization now has a dedicated maritime research facility and a network of more than 5,000 scientists working on more than 300 projects in 40 NATO allied and partner countries. So what's the future for the organization? It's important that the STO understand its relationships in the larger security world that makes it even more relevant to the future. And you think about uh, organizations that are engaged in our nation's security as a result of the climate emergency or the nation's security as a result of certain emerging technologies. 
our nation's security in the context of energy security. And there is crosswalks here with go what goes on in the STO and who better to try to build those bridges than the STO. We are right in the middle of a situation right now where you see where a lot of those things which started in, in Europe, in the US and so forth, went to China, went to Russia and other places. And we are having much less independence in many fields. And we have to recreate this independence. The last 70 years we have seen a lot of changes when it comes to threats, our adversaries, technology. But it's interesting to notice that the collaborative model that was created for science and technology back then is as valid and useful today than it was back then. So the whole concept of bringing people together in a low bureaucracy, informal environment, sharing information, working together, sharing the results, is more relevant now than in a very long time. <laughs>